Hello, and welcome to Dear SQL DBA, a podcast for SQL Server database administrators. I'm Kendra Little. It's great to be back. If you're listening to all the podcasts together out of order, there's a little bit of a time lapse between the last episode and this episode. I've been putting my time to great use. And one of the things I did, I actually just got back from doing a fitness vacation with folks at my gym. And it was really challenging, but in a cool way. It was really relaxing in the sense of just working out and challenging your body and then also trying to rest a lot. I kind of a, you know, I've never really been much of an athlete. So this was kind of a big deal for me and it was really fun. So in the spirit of, you know, kind of trying new things and putting yourself out there, if there's something anything in your life you've been thinking about doing that's just different, I kind of encur- I encourage you to try it because, you know, I just did this thing that I was like, oh, I don't know, that's kind of scary to do on my own. What if, what if I'm no good? And it turned out awesome. So cool stuff. Today's episode of Dear SQL DBA is about a kind of light bulb of an idea that just went off in my head today in response to a comment that came in on a question on my blog. So this didn't get technically submitted via the Dear SQL DBA question form. It is a question that I've encountered more than once in my life and I'm sure it's gonna come up again though, so I think it's a great question. Here, here's how the question came up. It was about, the question came in on a blog post about locking and blocking. And it says, hey, We've got an SSIS package and it needs to take out a schema modification lock to rename some tables. It's loading up some tables and replacing existing tables with them and it uses SP rename for it. And what's happening is it's getting blocked by other queries and then it is in turn causing this massive blocking chain behind it is there a way to keep it from getting blocked? The question originally came in is like, it's getting blocked by a query that just, you know, has really minimal lock. It just has kind of shared schema lock. Do queries have to have a shared schema lock? That's the way the question came in. Now I've run into this scenario in other situations too. This pattern I have found um, in different scenarios. And, and it even is, this isn't just a data warehouse thing. This happens sometimes in OLTP databases. And it it tends to be situations where we've got some tables that are fairly complex and the data that's in those tables is read a ton by the applications. It's, it's cached in the application layer, but we keep it in tables also. And essentially the, the tables are defined by you know some metadata. The tables may be updated periodically, but it's by kind of this batch or publishing process. You know, one of the users goes in and changes some things, and then they kick off a process that uses kind of complex lo- logic to populate these tables. And it isn't something that would be fun to just incrementally do. Like we change a lot of the data at once. So when we're done with this process, what we do is we do it to new tables. And then when we're done, you know, they're all set, we use rename usually to switch them in. Now, the thing that happened this morning is I had an idea about how to make this suck less because this pattern becomes painful over time because of what the questioner asks. What happens is if we're gonna do renames, we need to have an exclusive lock in the table we are renaming. We've gotta have this modification lock. We are the only one who can party with the table when that's happening. Because even if another query, if another query is running against that table, even if it's using like read uncommitted, it's still got to have that shared schema lock because SQL Server needs to know that like, we're not going to drop the column that it's reading or drop the whole table itself. It needs at least a little bit of stability, right? Just that's fair. The idea I had this morning is that there's something better than SP rename. And it even works in standard edition. It's in SQL Server 2014 and higher. 
the pattern that I think is better for this. And I've started, you know, kind of testing it out. I'm still sort of testing the water. So if you're listening to this and you hear what I have to say and you're like, I can think of problems with that, would love to hear about it on the blog. Hit me up at littlekendra.com. But he, so here's the pattern. Instead of using SP rename, we can use partition switching. This works in standard edition, even if the tables aren't partitioned. And this is part of what isn't obvious at all. Every row store table you create in SQL Server automatically has one partition. When you run create table on just a plain old table, even if you don't create a partition function or a partition scheme or any of that jazz, you get one partition. And SQL Server, even in standard edition, will let you switch data from a single partition table to another single partition table. It's just not something we commonly think about doing, but it does work in standard edition. The other piece of this is that in SQL Server 2014, they added a really cool little feature that lets you, when you're switching a partition, specify, I want you to wait at a lower priority. In other words, if you get blocked and if you have to wait, don't cause that massive blocking chain behind you. Give yourself a low priority so that while you're blocked and you sit there waiting, other things can continue to happen. You then get further options. You can say on your wait at low priority, which is just done on the alter table switch command. You can say, I want you to wait for one minute or five minutes. You get to specify. And you also get to say what happens after that time limit is up. You can say, okay, wait for a minute. Then after the minute is done, just kill off whoever is blocking you because you are more important. Now that's kind of risky. If there are other queries that might have long rollbacks that you might kill that are touching that table, right? You could, you could cause a big problem there. If you're confident that they aren't gonna have long rollbacks or even if you just don't care. Now you're gonna be waiting while they roll back if they modify that table. You could say, hey, you could say, hey, kill yourself after you wait, you're not as important. The cool thing is you get to decide and you get to specify. So instead of using SP rename to push in the new table, instead, what I think is an improved pattern, a pattern that is better, or you could say it just sucks less, this is the new pattern. You can do begin transaction. You do alter table on your current production table. Switch partition number one. That's your only partition. It's not partitioned. Switch partition number one to a table named production table old or any table with the same schema that the application isn't reading. You're just gonna switch the data out. That table that you're switching out to, it has to be in the same file group because it's not actually copying the data. This is the really cool thing about switching. It is a metadata only change. Bam, as soon as it can get that modification lock, that data is gone from the table. And on this, you can say with wait at low priority, don't, don't have that big chain of blockers behind you if you can't do it right away, how long you wanna wait, and then what you wanna do after it. And then immediately after you do that switch out, You've got your staging table that you've already fixed up and you want that data to be ready now. You do alter table on the staging table, which has to have the same schema as the table you're switching into, the same indexes, switch partition number one to the production tables partition one. You commit your transaction and you're done. This isn't actually any harder than doing the renames, right? Because in the old scenario, we were having to you know, populate the whole new table, create all the indexes we need on it also, and then just do these renames. This new version is using switch to move the data around. And it's, it, the, the issue is on SP rename, we don't have this wait at low priority option. We also like, let's say we don't wanna move the data out to anywhere. We're like, oh, well the old data, we just wanna get rid of it. Truncate table also doesn't have the wait at low priority option. However, that's really okay because you can just do this switch out to an empty table and just delete, you know, truncate 
the, the table that you've just switched out to as well. So it's a little bit of an extra step if you don't want to keep the data that you're getting, you know, switching out, but you do have that option to keep it too, which I think is really nice. So I was very excited when I thought of this and I immediately was like, we've got to write a blog post about this. Are there other people out there who've thought of this? I actually don't know if there are, I haven't happened to find them yet. So if this is something that you have experience with doing this partition, partition switching with weight at low priority to get around blocking chains, or if you've just come up with like, oh, well, I think there might be a snag in her plan, head on over to littlekendra.com and check out this post. It's titled, Why You Should Switch In Staging Tables Instead of Renaming and leave me a comment. Also, if you just want to play around with this, I've got a link to a code sample. I threw a, a very simple demo of this up on GIST, just showing exactly how this works and how you can reproduce the basic blocking situation and see how this gives you way more options than ye old SP rename ever did. So I hope this comes in handy for you sometime. I have a feeling it is going to come in handy for me. It's great to be back with you here on Dear SQL DBA. I'm Kendra Little, and I'll talk to you again next week.